Very exciting topic I have for you today. I want to talk to you about the rewards and penalties while staking Ethereum on ETH 2.0, the highly awaited Serenity upgrade, phase zero, just around the corner. And yeah, I want to talk to you about the differences, for example, between penalties and slashing, what kind of rewards, share some formulas with you and dive right into it, make it simple. And at the end of the video, I want to share with you a very interesting spreadsheet I found. And if you want to become a validator, I'm sure you will find that interesting. So stick around. My name is Kieran, really happy to have you here with me today. I create crypto and decentralized finance videos. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. Feel free to subscribe because I hope you get ready for the next bull run. So let's jump right into this. It's a very exciting topic. And as you might be aware, if you've been in the cryptocurrency space for a few years, um, if you were 1.0 has had a lot of scalability issues, the cryptocurrency, the ICO phase had uh, many uh, clockages, transactions held back and so on. Um, the crypto kitty, phase also clogged up the network and many other instances i think two weeks back we had the black swan event with make doubt also a lot of um yeah scalability issues on the network and i think that is one of the main reasons why we're moving to proof of stake moving to sharding and doing this whole serenity upgrade on ethereum moving ethereum to ethereum to um uh, 1.0 to 2.0 so that we can resolve these massive scalability issues and yeah i mean the ability to process thousands of transactions per second rather than the current and at the moment it's at 15 tps and has long been awaited and i want to share with you a quote and i think this just shows the massive potential of the phase two of um a serenity upgrade and this is a quote from vitalik buterin current ethereum chain can do 36 transactions a second but if you do a roll-up optimistic roll-up or a zero knowledge roll-up it goes up to 2.5 uh, 2500 transaction per second now if you do sharding only sharding then it goes up to 2,000, um, between 2,000 and 10,000. And if you do the roll up on top of sharding, then it goes up to 100,000 and possibly even 1 million uh, transactions per second, which I think is just mind blowing the speed. So I'm looking forward to that because that would mean many issues that we've had in the past won't happen again. So now the thing is, uh, as a validator, on the Ethereum 2.0 and as soon as phase zero um, starts, which is basically the heart of the whole operation. And you, you can become a validator by locking up 32 Ethereum. So you need at least, that's the minimum and the maximum that you can use to effectively transact with the beacon chain. And that's capped at 32 Ethereum, but you can add much more. Um, to that validator, but the 32 Ethereum is what is interacting with the beacon chain. Now, on the other hand, if your validator is affected by penalties, then this uh, these 32 Ethereum that you locked up will get cut, a little parts will get taken away until you've got less than 16. And as soon as you got less than 16 ETH on your validator, then you get forcefully exited, which is not so great. Now, I think what is very important when we look at penalties is a difference between uh, receiving a penalty as a validator and slashing. Well, slashing is much worse. Now, for the slashing, a validator that is caught incurring a slashable attestation is a forcibly uh, withdrawn from the beacon chain with its balance penalized in each epoch during the period it is on the leaving queue. So the slashing um, penalties are a lot higher than just normal penalties for inactivity. And yeah, the, the floor of the beacon chain is built on a unit called slots. And it's, it's very similar to a heartbeat. Every tw 12 seconds, a uh, slot uh, passes and a validator gets chosen to be the block proposer. 
and the attester committee of validators vote for this block to be part of the canonical chain and the um, here you've got a very good graph that just shows the latest justified epoch the latest epoch boundary and the head and here this is very interesting if the system has not achieved finality in a number of epochs so at the moment it's set at four then all the validators that are inactive during that time are hit with the inactivity penalty so yeah this is this is bad for if you're if you're inactive then you lose a little bit of your uh, funds so if you're a validator, make sure you remain active. And however, slashing is a lot worse. And there are three ways that you can um, be slashed. And you, like, if you get slashed, then uh, that means that the validator is forced to exit the beacon chain at a point in the future. At the moment, it's set at 36 days in the future. And the main three reasons to uh, be slashed is by being a proposer and assigning two different beacon blocks for the same slot, that's one slashable um, uh, event, by being an attester and sign an attestation that surrounds another one. And the third reason is by being an attester and sign two different attestations having the same target. So these are the three reasons that, that can lead to a slashable um, penalty now in all these cases the offender needs to be caught in order for the slashing process to be triggered so if one node realizes that another node is causing a slashable event well this uh, first node can become a whistleblower and he can like tell the network that this other node is uh, doing a slashable event and after phase zero the whistleblower will get a little bit of this reward, the slashing reward. However, for phase zero, the proposer gets the whole reward and the whistleblower gets nothing. But after phase zero, this will change and the whistleblower will also get something. And um, here we've got the formula for the whistleblowing rewards. And that is the whistleblower reward will be slashed validator effective balance divided by 512. Um, times um, seven divided by eight and the proposal including the message would be the same similar formula um, slashed validator effective balance divided by 512 um, times one eighth however in the phase zero the whole um, slashing reward goes to the proposer and for, so I, I, just, I mentioned before about the um, like the slashable, uh, the slashed validator that has to exit. Well, basically he has to exit um, in a future epoch and that is 36 days in the future. Or if we look at it in epochs, um, basically 8,192 epochs. And uh, one epoch is around uh, 30,000 blocks, not mistaken. So furthermore, if we look at the slashed validator, uh, a minimum penalty at the moment, the proposer includes the whistleblowing message in a block. So that's what the, uh, the, 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 no, the slashed validator gets. And a penalty at the beginning of every uh, epoch for missing the head FFG votes until the validator leaves the execute. And as you can see, this is really bad because he has to say in the network for 36 days. So he's always going to get a penalty for each epoch where he's missing the head um, FFG votes. And the third uh, thing that he receives is a special penalty is applied midway between the time when the whistleblowing message is included in a block and the time when the slashed offender can withdraw. So here we've got some other formulas with the slashing penalties so that at the slashing processing it's slashing slashed validator effective balance divided by 32 and during the epoch it's three times the base reward um, and for the special penalty it's effective balance times the minimum 
um, three times the sum of recently slashed balances um, total balance divided by total balance. And we, we looked at the base reward. The base reward is calculated by multiplying the effective balance times the base reward divided by base rewards per epoch, which is a constant times um, root of sum of active balances. The constant for the base rewards per epoch is um, four. So here we've got different constants. These constants you, you can look up. And yeah, so epoch processing. Now at the beginning of an epoch, so every 32 slots, apart from the first epoch, several things happen. And this is very important to know what is happening so that you do not occur, incur a slashable event. And the first thing that happens is justification and finalization of the chain. The second thing that happens is assignment of rewards and penalties to attestors. Um, third is update of the validator registry, the special slashing penalty. And um, the fifth step is some final updates, computing effective balances, resets, and so on. So. What is very important is if a validator has not been active in the previous epoch, but did not vote, um, sorry, I, uh, I say that again, if a validator has been active in the previous, but did not vote, it will um, get penalized for not matching the FFG um, votes and FFG is friendly finality gadget. Um, here we've got some more uh, formulas and I'll link all this down below so that you can look at it in peace. It's very useful for calculating um, your rewards, your penalties and so on because it's very important that you um, play by the rules when becoming a validator because it's just not fun uh, to be penalized, to be slashed and so on but you probably have to really try and do something maliciously um, to, be, to, to be slashed. So with the rewards and penalties um, for matching the source vote, the reward is base reward. We looked at the formula below uh, before, and that is a base reward times attesting balance divided by total active balance, and the penalty is the base reward. And the same goes for the other ones, which I'll just leave down be below because it's just going to be <laughs> way too boring to listen to me uh, read them all. I'm sure you can now read those on your own and um, make sense of those because we already looked at the penalty. Maybe we'll look at the uh, inactivity penalty. Uh, the inactivity penalty system failed to finalize for four epo epochs, and that is the penalty is four time base reward. So that's, um, you can calculate then one, what happens if your um, validator is offline for a longer period of time. Very important to realize that if you want to have your, host your validator at home, for example, and you want to go offline for a while, not that it's suggested. Um, here are some more uh, constants, very, uh, very good for any um, formula calculations and so on. And um, this is the very interesting, uh, more or less, uh, life um, example with uh, a certain amount of ETH staked on Ethereum 2.0. This is like um, an example uh, with 500,000 ETH staked and 95% of the validators being online. And if 95% uh, of the validators and each validator has 32 Ethereum, then you'd have 14,843 validators online, 781 offline, and the base reward being 22,897. So you can calculate how much um, the offline validators are going to be penalized and how high the reward is for the online uh, validators during that past epoch and we can you can just um, plug in the values um, based on here above to create the FFG rewards for voting 
the FFG penalties in case you do not vote, the free time space reward. And on the right, you've got all the values in gray and you can use a, a, a gray to ETH, a gray to USD a converter to figure out how much um, the value is of this gray in US dollar at the current Ethereum price. So yeah, um, that would mean with these calculations, the total reward minus penalties of um, Epoch in gray it would be around 1 million 247, um, yeah, sorry, 1 billion, uh, 247 million, 170, blah, 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 and so on. And that is around 1.25 ETH per epoch, which is uh, every 6.4 minutes. So I will link this uh, article down below. Uh, I want to say a big thank you um, to the Hermann Junge, uh, who wrote the article and many of the people that helped him write the article because um, they're doing a fantastic job of explaining how these things work and I try and make it a little bit easier for you guys to understand. So you can uh, check the article out in the link below. And yeah, really excited uh, for phase zero for staking. And uh, the last thing I wanna share with you because I think this is super exciting is the ETH 2.0 uh, staking rewards Google Sheets uh, document which I've got here and this is actually really good uh, you can use this to uh, figure out how much uh, your rewards are and you can also calculate your staking cost based on uh, what for example using a uh, Amazon uh, EC2 and all the different um, parameters so all this can be added to this uh, Google Sheets document and you can calculate your rewards, the costs associated with having a validator and many different things. So I will add this in the link below. You'll have to um, copy this document and make a copy so that you can add your own parameters. May, uh, please be aware that some of the information I gave in this uh, video, it would probably change. Um, some things change, some uh, constants change. Uh, some formulas change and so on. So be aware of that. Always make sure that you update your parameters, the constant they use in the formula. So that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.